Welcome to Laquita's Toolbox, where we deliver relevant content in the form of tools that empower entrepreneurs to elevate personally and professionally. Good is only good until greater is envisioned. You know there's another level in you. Here we discuss the tools to get you there. Lean in as Laquita and her guests present you with strategies and insight for unlocking your full potential to realize your boldest dream. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Laquita's Toolbox Live. I am your host, Laquita Mondley. And y'all, let me tell you, I'm just going to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Listen, everybody, thank you. I'm going to give a few more people the opportunity to come on into the room. But I've got an amazing guest in studio with me today. And she is going to be giving us some great gems um, on what it means. Not only, we're going to be talking about not only what it means to be a military family, but the topic of the hour is this. What do we need to do to prepare ourselves for properly transitioning from active duty service as a military family into full on civilian life. And those changes, many people are going through that. And uh, my guest today, Ms. Franchetta Dreyer, she is a subject matter expert on this, a fellow military spouse. I'm happy to have her. And y'all, I know this is going to be good. Like, <laughs> I know this is going to be so good, not just because Franchetta is the boss, but y'all would not believe the amount of drama that it took today <laughs> to get on this broadcast. I'm like, oh my God, the devil is alive. <laughs> so look, y'all, I see we got some folks coming in the room. Thank you so much. You guys, please hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons uh, so that we could get this broadcast out to as many people as possible. Those of you that are joining us, I see we have someone joining us from the Facebook community. Thank you so much for joining us there, Facebook user. And you write this, this, this app, this episode is definitely a gem. It's one that you, you guys are going to want to go back and look at over and over. But before we do get jumping into the conversation, Ms. Franchella, let me take a moment to thank our amazing sponsors at Covenant Press. They are a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory shop that is online uh, where we as believers can shop for clothing and accessories that allow us to wear the message of the love of Jesus Christ. Go out to www.covenant-press.com. Again, that's www.covenant-press.com. Shop until you drop, ladies and gentlemen. But don't click off of those pop-ups too quickly because they contain valuable discount codes. When applied at checkout, you can receive some amazing savings. And best of all, you guys, Covenant Press is owned and operated by an active duty Air Force family. So listen, military community, let's get in and support Covenant Press. Uh, believers, let's get in and support Covenant Press by shopping online. But without further ado, Ms. Franchetta, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing your day. <laughs> <laughs> I am doing fantastic. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you for your yes and your patience. <laughs> we're military spouses, so we're used to this. We have to know how to transition. Right. Resiliency, right? Yeah. Resiliency. Yeah. You got to keep it moving in the midst of transition. Keep <laughs> it moving. Find the solutions as you go. <laughs> But look, take a moment to let everyone know who you are and what you do. Um, as you know, I'm Franchetta Dyer, and I'm the CEO and founder of Vet Tech Business Services. And what we do here at Vet Tech Business Services is that we transition families. Mm, we yes. first sit down with that service member and we make sure that we have a career path for them. Because Vet Tech Business Services, we don't do jobs, we do careers. That's Amen. the first thing you need to understand about us because we have to look for the future for you because mm -hmm. sometimes you can't see it. So the first thing we do is make sure that that a service member is taken care of and make sure that they're on the right path to their goals. Then we go to the military spouse 
And I feel that every military spouse should have a resume, no matter what you do, because you have to be prepared for the aha moments. And aha moments sometimes do come. So we want to give them a free resume. And then we go to their dependent. Most people forget about the dependents, but if you have 11th and 12th graders that are out there looking to go to college, they need a free resume. And that is what we also give to them. And we sit them down if they need help looking for scholarships, grants, um, thinking about certain degrees. We want mm. to make sure they pick the right degree for their career path as well later on down the line. And then we even take care of your animals. We have other military spouses that can talk to your animals if they need help or they're acting up. So we transition families from the military. Yes. We yes. don't transition just a service member. We do families. That's what makes us different. And we do it as a group. And we ask those hard questions. So Amen. I'm a, a resume writer, but I am a coach. I am an influencer. I am, I am a resume. That is what I want my clients to walk around looking at is hashtag I am a resume. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Look, you you just dropped some gems right there because as you were speaking, it made me think about, you know, every time we talk and I'm just always amazed at the value that you bring to the military family. Like the the transition process is not an easy process. No. And I know, you know, we've had several conversations about it. And I love that you help the entire family transition because, you know, as I shared uh, me and my family's story, my, as we were preparing for the transition, our total mindset was, you know, how is this going to impact my husband? How is this going to, in, you know, impact him psychologically, you know, emotionally? How is that going to impact um him shifting into a completely different lifestyle because yes. for 24 almost 25 years mm -hmm. he was a soldier you know and you know in my opinion he was the best non-commissioned officer in the united states army and i'm entitled to that and i will yeah. argue anybody about that okay so. <laughs> and so was mine he was number yes. one too that's you know go army <laughs> you know go army right so we were focusing on that, that we didn't put a lot of energy into thinking about how was that transition into civilian life going to impact me? And yeah. even for, you know, even more into it, like, as you were saying, the, you know, the services and, and the coaching that you provide as it related to our children. We yeah. didn't think about them at all until we were at Frankfurt on in the Frankfurt on the plane. Yes. And they said some things to us. They spoke to us and they were teenagers at the time. The two older ones were in college, but they had been going to college at the education center on Raffenbeer. Yes. The youngest one was a freshman. He had all of my children had never known anything outside their dad being in the army. And so the yes. questions that they asked us, well, will we still get to go on post? Do we still get to keep our ID card? You know, how will this work? It's like you don't think about how that impacts that move impact will impact your entire household and the dog yes we didn't yes. think about how that would impact the dog no but because but we, the time the animals start acting up and you're thinking they're being bad but they're not your they have anxiety acting differently it's not yeah. that no one thinks about the dependents when you mm -hmm. say dependent they normally think of the military spouse mm -hmm. they normally say the military kid no the dependents or the military spouse and the children and, and the children and yes, so to the family pet yes. um the family pet very much so because when we got here not thinking about it you know yeah. we figure inga is going to be okay inga is our boxer you yeah. know inga's going to be okay she's been with us she's coming home yeah. with us but just because inga was with us did not mean that inga was okay with being in this new environment Exactly. And we ended up eventually having to take her to the vet to find out she had anxiety and separation. And the things that she was doing was mm -hmm. a result of that because we had her in this brand new place that she did not want to be in. <laughs> no, because she had spent her whole life in Germany. Yeah. And now you bring me to, to Texas and it's two degrees cooler than hell. Like, what, what are you exactly. doing? To me? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everybody transitions. So people forget that when you're transitioning, it is the entire family. It's not yes. just a service member because when he transitioned, he's not the mission anymore. Now mm -hmm. who is his battle buddy? His battle exactly. buddy is the military spouse and mm -hmm. his children or her children mm -hmm. 
or just the spouse, depending on if you have dependents. So right. everything changes. The dynamic in the family changes. Everyone has an opinion, but everybody is afraid to say it. To, so we to say something and ask those hard questions. We yes. ask about your finances before you even start trying to find a job. I need to know that you can be focused on that if your monies are good. Now, most mm. people are going to worry about that. And so they can't start doing it now because vet tech business do it. So don't start asking about your money. <laughs> if you have to it. We do that because they're going to get tired of it. I've been doing yes. this since I was 16. So mm. this is something that uh, my parents taught us. And certain things you can't get in a book. You either have right. it or you don't. Vet tech. You have to have that experience. Yeah, yeah so vet yep. tech business have that experience because we've been doing it for over 30 something years. So it's important that we understand about transitioning the entire family. That That is so awesome. Listen, guys, if you are just tuning into the live, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been here since the beginning, thank you for sticking around. Look, guys, this is a great time to like, share, and subscribe to this broadcast uh, because you want to know when we release new episodes. And that's every Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're right here broadcasting live across the various social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, wherever your favorite platform is, we are probably broadcasting it to you. So listen, thank you for tuning in. Get in the comment section. We want to hear from you. If you are a military family or you know military families. This broadcast has some great information, but we want to know your thoughts. Share your thoughts. Share your experiences. Don't be afraid to jump in the chat and engage in this conversation. We do want to hear from you. So again, when you get into the into the broadcast, get in the comments. Let us know who you are, where you're from, and please, please, please add some value to this conversation. Now, I know that we're both military spouses and there's, you know, millions of military spouses across the globe. And we do a number of different things um, for both our vocations and our occupations. But you have chosen to specifically focus in on transitioning and helping the entire family transition. What is your what it what uh, ignites your passion for the military family in that way? Like what pushes you and what's your why? The reason why I focus on the military family is one word, homeless. Mm. All it's right. No reason That's not, a powerful word. It is no reason that a family of a military family should ever be homeless, not even yes. a service member. Yeah. Yeah. Because That's real for good. us, That's we're real very good. compassionate about that. And what I mean by that is we, when I say that we take care of the whole family, we mm -hmm. ask them about benefits. Mm. We make sure that, are you going to the VA? And if they're not, we know people who can help them. Mm, that's good. So that's homelessness good. is that is my word because it's no excuse for not, it's no excuse for a military family to be homeless or without, mm -hmm. or without a career. I don't want to yes. say jobs because vet tech business like to do careers so that Amen. you can have it for longevity. So Amen. you can make something of your family so you all can be stable. So it's Amen. very important to me that when I have clients, we look at careers. I don't do jobs. I do careers yes. to make sure that they are stable within their family as one unit. As one unit. That's real good because homelessness in the military community happens more often than people realize. And yes. You know, when I, I live uh, outside of Fort Hood, it's the biggest military installation out of all of the, the branches, bar none. It's the biggest one. And we have an amazing amount of homeless mm -hmm. veterans. And to be fair, even some active duty and reservists. And yes. people might be listening to this and thinking to yourselves, well, how are you homeless and you affiliated with the military? Life happens. Yes. They don't care. Life happens. And it happens without your permission. Correct. And a lot of and, times yeah. um, they have to be prepared. So, again, you have to prepare that service member. You have to prepare them so that they are ready to transition. And people forget who they are talking to. That's why yes. it's important to know your audience. Yes. And what I mean by that is when, when they are talking to transitioning service members, they stand up and they let them know you can do anything that you want to do. 
That mm-hmm. is not a true statement. You cannot Come do on. anything. We need to we need to hone in yeah. on what you are really great at. And great so when at, I yes. sit down and talk to them for less than 15 minutes, I can already do their career path and tell them what jobs they can do and pretty much create that resume for them so that when they look at that resume, they sit up like this. Yeah. Instead of like this. Yes. I yes. Mean, Come they on. Pride in themselves. I mm-hmm. show them. This is what you have accomplished out of one year, four years, 10 years, yes. 21 years, 30 years. It's no little, you know, people or big people. And what I mean by mm-hmm. that is a specialist is just as important as my three-star general. Come on now. That's real current. good. That's real Everybody good. Everybody is treated the same across the board, which is called That's respect. Real good. And that is That's what we do. We have to make sure that these Families understand about transitioning. You mm-hmm. have to know who you are talking to because yes. if I'm still a green suitor and I'm talking to someone who's transitioning and they're mm-hmm. not really out, and I say mm-hmm. to them, I want you to do A, B, C, D and never get a resume done, mm. they're still in the mindset of still being a service member. Yes. So they're yes. going to believe what you tell them. Yes. I have people wait two years to come back to me to help. To ask for help because people told them, don't do this, don't do mm-hmm. that. Come and on, that's, that's real good. Yeah. That's so real good. You have to know your audience. So when I'm mm-hmm. speaking to individuals, I make sure they understand here is what I can give you. Mm-hmm. Do you want my help? Right. right. And even if they don't use vet tech business services, I still give them tips to help them in their next career. Awesome. That's so, like, I, I remember. Um, when my husband was going through the tap process um, and I went to a couple of sessions mm-hmm. with him that was recommended to bring your spouse. And we purposely signed up at that time. It was called boots to business because okay. we knew that one of the things we wanted to do upon his retirement would be become successful entrepreneurs, yes. but we needed to know what was the good place to start. You know, we wanted to know <laughs> what was the military offering in way of assistance and who could set us up got it tracking so with that that helped us a great deal but i also noticed in some of those classes especially the resume writing and all of that it was highly recommended that you don't pay for a resume correct um and (laughs) then we happened to have some conversations my husband was a coach uh, mm-hmm. for the football team for CYS mm-hmm. and has a conversation with some of the parents who had already transitioned out and they were civilians. Mm-hmm. And so the information that we got from them was the exact opposite of what was given to us in SAP. It's like, no, you need to pay for that. You need yes. to pay for that because there's so many nuances to this and the translation of your active duty certificates, your job descriptions, the different things that you have on how to write it in a way that it won't get kicked out by the, at, at that time, it was Resumex for USA yes, Jobs. Yes, it was and, Resumex. And, and it was easier yeah. though. With yeah. Resumex, it was easier because that's how I started my company in Germany. I heard two mm. service members say they couldn't make a list. And yeah. I told them I could help them. And that's how right. I started o- overseas with doing resumes. And I started mm. helping enlisted because at one point, and I'm very compassionate about enlisted. They would Absolutely. always tell enlisted that you could be a GS5 or a 7 or a 9. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to go against the odds. And so I did. Yeah. So I made right. sure that my enlisted are, are 13s, 14s, 15s, and on up. And on. Because right. really, depending upon what your career field is, what certifications you made sure you got while you were on active duty, yes. civilian education, military education, experience, all of these great things, especially as you get to be senior non-coms, mm-hmm. it didn't make sense to, I mean, nothing wrong with a GS5, GS6, GS7, 8, or 9, nothing wrong with that. I was those. I was a you GS4 know. when I came in and I had an MBA. So Exactly. Like, this is that, what that makes sense. Yes, right. you have to look at it and understand TDAs and men and, and manpower. So mm-hmm. when I speak about manpower, I'm talking about, you know, what is your TDAs? What is the highest grade in that uh, in that area? And sometimes right. the highest grade in that area is a GS6. So you mm. got to know different things about, you know, about the 
government side as far mm -hmm. as GS because you will be thinking, well, I'm equivalent to a 13, but they only have a nine. So you may mm -hmm. have to apply for a nine. So you have to understand the TDAs, manpower. What does that really look like before you just decide to say, I don't want to do this. But then back back to the resume, you have to be able to talk your resume. Back mm, to come on, that's good. It wasn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But as you got, um, as they changed the systems, everything got kicked out. If you didn't have this, if you didn't have that, but they start making mistakes as well. So mm. you have to know what you want. That's right, the first right. thing. Before you even get out of the military, they may not tell you this, but 120 days is not enough time to have a resume. Come Most on of my now. clients had resumes and they was 15 years in, 20 years Come in. Come on. Their resume was already there. All we had to do is go back and retweak it. And I'd already taught them how, how to understand USA Jobs. So right. most of my clients don't come back because I have them set up for the grade that they're in, the next grade, and the grade after that. So they don't yeah. need to come back because they already prepped and prepared for the future. And for the that's future. the difference with vet tech. We try to sit down and make sure that in most cases, you have to keep coming back and forth. I don't need to see you four or five times. Because if I got right. four or five times, I haven't done my job. Come on, that's good. That's so good. I have to make sure that resume is where your family can excel and you can make profit and you can get promoted. Listen, y'all, if you just tuned in, you're missing some gems. But don't worry. This is a podcast. It's a live stream. Hashtag replay is in effect. You could go back, rewind this thing and listen to it because... I already knew Miss Franchetta was going to drop gems on us. Listen, military family, the family members of military families, mm -hmm. share this broadcast. She is giving great, great wisdom for military families. And what you just said, look, y'all hit them like, share, and subscribe. Get this, get this out because this can bless some people. It can bless a whole lot of people because that 120 days, don't that that's a drop in the bucket like that's you on crash mode like you're trying yes. to do too many things in such a short amount of time and i know like when ben was getting ready to uh come to retirement the recommended time at that point to start your process was two years out but we also know that just because that's recommended don't mean you was gonna get in them classes so if right. we already know the standard says you need two years out before you do it Mm -hmm. before you drop that package to start doing these things yes. then you probably should go into if you at 15 years and you know you're going to do 20 you need to look at at, yes. at what you're doing at year 15 yes. do I need a degree what do I need a degree in what mm -hmm. can I be doing in these last few years to prepare me for where I want to go and that's something that Miss Franchella just, uh, just dropped on you but one of the other things that she just really explained was she gave a little bit of insight into how the GS system really works. And so what I'd love for you to do right now is either dispel the error or give, uh, let me say it like this, give us some truth on, well, just take this GS position now and you can work your way up in the system. Okay. That's a true and false statement. Come okay. on, let's talk about it. Now, <clears throat> depending on, how you was picked up, if mm -hmm. you picked up from the VRA or VEOA, different statuses allow you to do different things. Yes. VRA, three years, VEOA, 10 years. Now you're going into a whole different area. So you have to know what, how they pick you. If they pick you off of this list or that list, and what was the status? Was it VRA? Was it military spouse? Was it VEOA? How were you picked up? OK, so a lot of people don't ask that. They just get it. And then when I ask them, they don't know. I mean, people don't even know to ask it, though. But the reason why they don't know, because during the 120 days while you out processing and taps, you are on your phone looking at I need to get housing. I need to make sure everything is being moved. Mm. Do my daughter, son have school ready? That's not top priority for them is to right. look at that resume. Top right. priority is that I'm about to retire. I got to make sure retirement's ready. If we buy in a home, is my family safe? Right. Resume right. writing is important, but normally it kind of just kind of passes by because I went to TAPS and stood outside the door and watched them. Mm -hmm. See, in my class, you wouldn't have a phone. But when Come you on. walked out, you would have a 
a government resume. A government so resume. Ready to apply yeah. for a position when you walked out the door. So you, I, I love that. Different. Now, break that down in the difference of the resume types, whether you're going in to apply for, because I know, let me let me just talk about for probably when our spouses were in, and we're talking old army 30, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. but seemed like current army, that way of thinking is still lingering. Mm -hmm. And it's having some negative impact on some senior non-coms um, and probably even some field grade officers or junior officers who thought that my bachelor's degree was just going to be enough. It'll get me where I need to go in my rank or with the senior non-coms. I don't have to worry about getting my bachelor's or my master's or whatever. I'm going to just stay in my field. And if I can't get into GS, I'm going to walk into the contracting. Mm -hmm. Help us get rid of that erroneous way of thinking. Like, <laughs> well, you have so many people that they're in the government. So when they, uh, the government system. So when they say that to service members who are getting out, they're going to take their word. I worked at CPAC. I've been manpower. I've been a personnel um, assistant. I've been, I've done in out processing. I've downsized a whole finance battalion. I've done TDAs, you know. All riffs, I've done it all. The problem is you need to understand that in some cases, I know they say this a lot on LinkedIn, that if you're this rank, then this is your GS level. They go by ranks. But what, yep. would, you, but what would you say if you have a, a person that has an associate degree that's a GS-14 that retired as a master sergeant? Oh, that's Come one on. of my clients. Or Come a sergeant on. first class that got some education. He's a 13. So for me, I go against the odds. I'm right. the one that go against the odds. That's why I call myself a badass military spouse. Come on now. Let someone tell me how to take care of my clients. Come that's on. That's real problem. good. So a lot of people are going to agree with me and a lot of them won't. But guess what? I'm okay with it. I'm still not going but to. You I can't say. argue with results. So what I do is I look at what they have to offer and then mm -hmm. i can tell them what career path they need to go and what grade level they need to be at right that's how i i sit down with every family member after i break them down so it depends because a lot of times they're going to tell you you have to have a doctrine for this a master's and bs in some cases certain things do need to have a degree it depends on the position that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. that you'll have to have certain certifications. Mm -hmm. But before you just go panicking, you need to come talk to me. I'll give you 30 minutes for free. But that's okay. all you get between 15 minutes and 30 minutes. After that, the clock starts ticking. Okay. Right. Come but on now. The, really the, but this is information that you need out. to invest in. Yes. But you have to take time out and close out everybody and pick the company that's best for you to right. help you transition. And a lot of times, yes, they will tell you don't pay for a resume. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Don't, if that's what you want to do. But mm -hmm. no one ever told me what I could not do because Come they on. didn't offer to help me. No Come one on. offered to tell me these things. I had to research and learn off of trial and error. And in nine years being overseas, military spouses, I never interviewed for a job. I knew how to network. And Come if you on. know how to network and you do it correctly by the book, mm -hmm. believe me, when my husband was moving to Versburg and, and he was in Graffenville, I was actually already reaching out to people. Hello, I am Franchetta Dyer. I know you need mm -hmm. an admin assistant. I can do RPA. All I need is yes or no. Yes. Okay. Thank right. you. So right. you have to know how to network. And a lot That's of times. Your pride is on your shoulder because of your degrees. Mm -hmm. but when you're in a foreign country, you need to play by the rules and understand oh. that you're going to have to do some work. Yes. GS4 for me, I started out as a GS4. Mm -hmm. But the things that I've done, some of the things that I've been in and saw, most military spouses have not seen them, but probably officers have. Yeah. Yeah. So again, yeah. You have to understand the right attitude. You have to have the right attitude when you are transitioning because, because you was called sir. When I speak to you, I'm going to call you by your first name, either Keith, Bob, Joe, Harry, because in the civilian in corporate America, they're not about to call you Colonel 
dot 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 or general not at all yeah not now they're going to give you that respect because you are a general right but most of the time some some people who have never heard about the military mm -hmm. or who don't like the military it's not mm -hmm. going to give you that type of respect come and on that's, that's real another good. thing you have to think about as you write your resume is who are you presenting it to please stop putting secret claimants on all of your resumes <laughs> and you're not applying for it a, a job that requires it yeah because you're telling too many people Come I was in Germany doing 9-11. So that's why I'm very adamant about don't put all these secret clearances and stuff. Mm -hmm. And another gem that you really need to remember is just because certain awards you 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 got, they mm -hmm. don't need to be on the resume. I talked about this before. I had a um a client that did not want to take off his purple heart. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, it's not that it's not important, but I need you to understand that's going to open some doors. Mm -hmm. He suffered with PTSD. Mm. He left it on there because at the end of the day, I can't make you do anything now. I'll, I'm not a bully, but I'm 4'11 and I kind of know some things. I've kind of <laughs> been around for a while. You're 4'11. Well, when you went to the interview, guess what? They started asking, me, oh, you got a purple heart. So how did you get it? What happened? They started asking questions that took his PTSD to a whole different level. Another, level. another level, yeah. Because guess what? They weren't in the service and this was something new to them. They'd heard about it, but can you tell me your experience? No. Mm. And he said, Miss Dyer, I think we need to take that off. I said, are you sure? Yes. So you have to know what to put on the resume and what to leave off as well. Right. So I love that what you've covered there because that, that has me thinking about not just just the resumes, but the LinkedIn profiles, mm -hmm. your other social media profiles, um, your, where you get, you know, your header, that that mm -hmm. first thing that people are going to see that describes who you are and what you bring to the table, mm -hmm. what's your value, you know, why, mm -hmm. how can you be a value to the company? And um, and I love that. I see a lot of times because my husband is in the Intel community and so we are, for, you know, so a lot of my LinkedIn friends, are, of course, from. Yeah. that our time uh, as a military family and i guarantee you 99.99 percent of them have that tsi mm -hmm. you know poly or whatever they have you know what i'm saying tsc csi mm -hmm. they have all of that in their linkedin descriptions but what does that have to do with anything on your linkedin yes I understand yeah. that companies want to see that because some some companies look for that. That is what mm -hmm. they are researching for. But you may want to hide it within the resume so they can within. still see it. But you so like within your it. about section. Yes. But again, yeah. everyone mm -hmm. will have their own opinion on a resume. So let's mm -hmm. make sure we understand that. And also, if if one of my clients, I do a resume for them and then a recruiter tell them, I don't like this resume. I want it done like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We mm -hmm. flip it real quick and put it A, B, C, D, E, yeah. F, G because they're right. trying to get a job. So understand right. that a resume is never, hear this clearly, is mm -hmm. never written in stone. You so don't have to change it. The, the resume. So the resume that you would use for USA Jobs, is it in the same format or layout? as a resume that you would use with a contractor because you're mentioning a recruiter. So the, you know, getting, getting your information in the hands of the recruiter mm -hmm. in these big contracting, you know, for the contracting world, how different does that resume need to look? Something that I'm going to submit to USA jobs versus something that I'm going to submit to one of these contracting companies. It's going to vary because, <clears throat> and, and, and I'll give my example. When I went for my contracting job in DC, my government resume was good for them. I didn't break okay. out a professional resume. It's going to be determined. You know, so what I would do is I would ask, what is the format that you prefer for okay. me to be in, you know, for okay. my resume to be in? Because you can ask that question because they may right. say, we just want two pages, bullet point. Well, okay. some people want to see what you've done for the military and and that's good because they mm -hmm. can look at it and say, okay, yes, they, they actually did hold this position. Yes, they did do this. And others will only want two pages. So it will vary. It will I, vary. Yes, ma'am. Because I think every contract company is different. Some con contract companies, just like I said, they took my 
USA job resume. But then mm-hmm. another contract company I had only wanted two pages. So only wanted two pages. On who you are applying with and what is their format for resume submission. For resumes. So, mm-hmm. you know, so basically my takeaway is it, it depends upon the employer's preference, whether we're trying to stay in the GS world. Yes. whether we are trying to go into the government contracting world and even maybe in the true civilian sector coming into corporate America and just walking away yes. from federal government, well, state government or yes. or into true civilian world, corporate America, yes. it depends upon what the company wants or needs or what the state government might want or need to see from you. So yes. what, it's not a one thing, one it size all. fits all. No, because even in the USA Jobs part of it, USA Job has a little format that you can put your information in. And my format is different than theirs. So okay. I upload my resumes. So it's different. And sometimes they'll have it where it should look more like a professional resume, mm-hmm. which I know for a fact has none of the words in it. And people who have gotten... Normally, people who have put a two-page resume in for a USA job had the hookup. They won't tell you that, but nine times out of ten, that's what yeah. they have because it was the, the, the job was already designed for them in the beginning. They just yes. had to go through the formality. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. I know we winded down on our time, but that's mm-hmm. important. I'm really glad you said that. Okay. So as to, to because to me, as a as a military spouse, mm-hmm. we understand that there are some unwritten things. Yes that go on in our culture and Mm -hmm. that certain jobs are left for certain spouses of Mm -hmm. certain key leaders. And so even though those jobs are open and available for a short Mm -hmm. period of time, or may they may never close, like it's just always open, but you got 99,000 spouses applying, but nobody's getting the job. I I really love that you said that. So to, you know, to help other military spouses, military dependents, don't get discouraged if your resume uh, if you're not picked up for certain positions, because, you know, as Franchetta just said, sometimes those positions have been designed specifically for a particular individual, but yes. the root, the law got to be followed. So yes. They got to open it. And they got to accept applications. Yes. And, and normally um, I can read a job announcement and tell you what what rank that that job announcement is for, because mm-hmm. I can start reading parts of I'm like, OK, that's no, that's not what they would. OK, this is for this level of individual because I had a client and it was funny. Um, I did a resume for her and she wanted to apply for a position. And I guess she was testing me and I didn't know. So I mm-hmm. told her the rank it was for. And she said, that's funny because that is for my colonel. That's his position out there. They're not going to pick mm-hmm. anyone but him. But him. Yep. So exactly. again, don't get discouraged because of that. It is mm-hmm. little tricks that you have to do in USA jobs where as before you did not have to. And people are going to say, well, don't say that. Yes, you need to know that. You That's need to know that up front. Yes, yeah. because if you don't, you will not make a list most right. of the time. And most depending the time. on that resume and how you answer questions. Mm-hmm. So again, you have to know what you want and make sure that when you put that resume out there, that you check the check mark that says searchable. Because mm-hmm. I've had too many people tell me, Miss Dyer, I'm not making the referral list. And when I go look at look at everything they don't even have to check more checked to make their resume searchable searchable okay that that's real good look y'all we have been having a great conversation i see we had a couple of more people pop in miss Lori, thank you for coming on to the live chris sanders my brother thank you for coming on the live we've got a few more facebook users that have come into the conversation we appreciate you miss lachelle atkins america's supermom and fellow military spouse thank you for coming into the live i hope you guys have been blessed by this conversation miss franchetta has been dropping tools usable practical tools y'all military family y'all need this information family members of other military families y'all get this in their hands you know I, I really love how you just broke that down and reading the position of my my sister-in-law is a relatively new military spouse to me you know my brother-in-law hasn't been active duty very long and she had applied for a couple of positions and mm-hmm. she was discouraged because she couldn't understand she was overqualified for the some of the positions and she, she we had a conversation and mm-hmm. 
what we ended up talking about in that conversation is exactly what you just said, baby. This was written for a particular person. Don't be discouraged. You oh, saw yeah, it and yeah. then it was gone for a reason. Like it's oh, not yeah. that you didn't qualify mm -hmm. because you're not you're not capable of doing the job. It wasn't meant yeah, for, for anybody else but a but particular it's two person. Things, but it's two things that you need to remember. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make the resume searchable. Mm -hmm. But if you should happen to get the hookup. Please go back and do a resume that is that is a USA job resume. Job resume. Because yes. guess what? What happens if the person who hooked you up decides to leave Come and on. you don't like that position no more and you have a crappy resume? Come on. You better talk about it. So you might as well go ahead, pay someone, pay go through it for yes. free, but do something and have it professional because that's mm -hmm. a representation of you. So if Come you on. want to be lazy and and give a two-page resume that looks like crap, that represents you. That don't Come represent on. them. Because then when you get tired of, of that position, mm -hmm. you still got to go back and get a resume done. And you could have done it right the first time. Right. The first time. Or even yes. you make me think about, you know, especially those that are um, stationed overseas. Not that spousal preference doesn't work in country, but that's usually, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's usually something that's a really big thing when we're overseas and yes, if you've got that position under spousal preference and you got the hookup and yeah. your service member either ets is because they got a job and you stayed in country mm -hmm. or they retired and got a job with sofa agreement and you stayed in yeah. country and now you have to reapply for your job yes well it's not even reapplying because you have to again see if your management is willing to see if they can get you on your own status and Come that on. normally means that you have to reapply for your job. And if you're not in the top three and a vet blocks you, you could lose your job. So normally they'll just close it out. They mm -hmm. wanted me to get my status. And I was a management analyst. And two, two uh, veterans blocked me. But they really hadn't been doing the job. A lot of times service members just put stuff on their resume so they can yes. make the list. But so then they can make the list. To them, they still active duty. And I think that's why they start putting different rules into place, but mm -hmm. it allowed them also to see where their grade level was as well. And if their well. resume was good to go, then they just put it aside. The second thing is this, just because you don't get on a referral list, you need to check why they told you you didn't make it. This yes. is a free gym. Now, yes. no you're not going to do it. Look, she done gave y'all a lot of free gems tonight, so y'all better yeah. reach out to her when she give you her contact information. That's no, what so, need to add. Yeah, so really what happened was one of my clients, they told her she didn't make the list. I looked at it and I was like, go ask them this specific question. And she did. She got a 12. Come on. Look so at what this. I'm telling you is this. Just because they tell you they don't, do some homework. Mm -hmm. get, off, get off your butt. This is your resume. This is your mm -hmm. career path and mm -hmm. do some work. Yes. Yes. Come on. Don't just rely on USA job and someone telling you that you didn't qualify. Go back and look and say, hold on. I do have this. I do have that. Here you go. Yes. So it is, it is important that you understand that because if you don't, many people have let individuals tell them they didn't make the list and they leave it at that. My clients, no. I give them questions to ask so they understand if they truly didn't make it. And mm -hmm. some of them have come back to say, Miss Dyer, I got the job because they didn't see this, this or this. Yes. yes. It's accountability oh. as well. When you're doing resumes with me and I'm talking to the whole family, everybody is held accountable. And that's very important. And another thing is that when you're on USA Jobs, I know you all like to have 15 different resumes. But you have to pick one resume to have searchable. Just mm -hmm. understand that. It has mm -hmm. to be only one resume. So it's choose searchable. wisely. Mm, Remember the reason why I said that? You need to come have a meeting with me to find out that answer. But come you on. need to have one resume searchable. Searchable. Look, y'all. This has been the <laughs> most impactful interview that I've had. Like, I've had several great interviews in this 2023 that the Lord has made. But this right here has been truly impactful because just as, as the military family, uh, because of 
the prevalence of homelessness is your motivation. Mm -hmm. The same thing with me as a military spouse, my motivation is I, I, there was a lot of years that I was a military spouse and could not figure out why I couldn't get a GS job. I couldn't get an AV job. I couldn't get a wage grade job. Then I switched over to contracting. I couldn't get a contracting job until somebody sat down and gave me some wisdom mm -hmm. and gave me an opportunity, opened a door for us. I went 10 years thinking I wasn't good enough to get into these jobs. It really messed with my head mm -hmm. until somebody took the time, as they say, put me on game. And then I got into these positions. So mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about giving information and being a, a point of contact for military spouses. You don't have to have that struggle. No. You do not have to have that struggle that a lot of military spouses have today because mm -hmm. they don't understand how the system works. Yes. They don't know how to work within it. So y'all look. Get in contact with mm -hmm. friend Shetta. That, that, there is no excuse. There is no excuse. She already told you she's going to get 30 minutes for free. And in the 30 minutes, you're going to want to make the investment. Look, she done gave you four. How old we at, girl? I can't see because I'm on this phone, y'all. <laughs> she done gave us about 47 minutes for free. Well, <laughs> let, let's say she done gave us 45, kind of two minutes for my little commercial. <laughs> No, but yeah. also, but but also, you can go to my website and get a free professional resume. My daughter went and and did a free professional resume, and she got her job um, <laughs> at a a really good night. Well, a very Fortune five hundred company. Come on, and she's, you Listen. know. So, and she's doing. And you said that's a free resume. Yes, a free resume is Listen, on my. Y'all don't got no excuses now. You but once you get a free excuses. resume, you need to reach out to me because then I'm going mm -hmm. to train you on how to use it and mm -hmm. show you some other uh, areas that can help you look for a job as well. Listen, come on now. Miss Candy Guma, Miss Candy Martin, thank you for popping in the line. Candy says she done shared this in her group and she has an amazing group on Facebook, y'all. Look, get share this. More y'all that's popping in on the live and the replay share this to as many people as possible because it's going to be a blessing in more ways than you know because it got to a point where it wasn't even about the financial need that we had or didn't have mm -hmm. it it really had to do with my mental and spiritual well-being where this is you know why you know my service member is growing in rank our family is growing I got the education. I'm doing these things, Lord. What is happening? I didn't understand the system. This is going to be so much more of a blessing, way greater than money that yeah. you were being able to give to a military family by hitting that share button. <laughs> it's free, y'all. Hit the share button. It's free. It don't cost nothing. It takes mm -hmm. like three seconds. Click share and send it to somebody. We got Miss Linda Gray just popped in. Hello, Miss Linda. Thank you. And thank you for the LinkedIn family that has popped in. She says, yes, this is such a blessing. Her husband, her husband served in Vietnam and her daughter is a disabled veteran. And this information is valuable. Absolutely, Miss Linda. Yeah. This information is valuable. Look, Miss Franchetta, mm -hmm. what is your contact information? How can the people reach out to you and get on your calendar? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Franchetta Dyer. You can um, go to my website, www.vettechbusiness, V-E-T-E-C-H-B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S, services, all one word, dot com. Look, but you yeah, can you always just con connect with me on Instagram is the same thing, Franchetta Dyer. Um, and then if you want to talk to me on LinkedIn, reach out to me again. It's a free resume there for the whole family. So even if you don't use my services, have a conversation with me and mm -hmm. I will leave you with some tips that can help you get a career. Because again, I don't do jobs. I do careers. So I don't believe in hopping around unless it's a purpose. Mm -hmm. So just reason. know that I'm very excited about, you know, helping the military families. Awesome. Awesome. Miss French Heather, thank you again. Thank you. I really appreciate your yes and your patience. And mm -hmm. I know absolutely without a shadow of a doubt why the enemy was fighting this conversation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, 
I know why the enemy was fighting this conversation. It has been such a blessing to have you. Before we go, is there um, anything else that you would like to share with the Toolbox audience? Um, the one thing I would like to share is before you even transition, start looking at yourself as someone that has value mm. in different positions in your family. Yes. Just because yes. you're transitioning doesn't mean that you're not valued anymore because you're a service member. Just That's because good. you transition over, you are still important to us. Mm, come on. You know, remember, through 9-11, we remember it well. Yeah. To yeah. every service member, Vietnam, my father was World War II. He had PTSD. My mother taught us how to handle it when he was asleep because he would still have conversations. Mm -hmm. And the thing yeah. that I love most about doing this job is you all, the service members and their families, yeah. understand that you still have value. Yes. You still have a mission. You still have a purpose. Yes. Yes. And don't let no one, a recruiter, tell you that because they take 10 seconds to look at your resume that you're not qualified. Mm, come on. Come keep on. Keep pushing because, again, maybe if they would take a little bit more time with some of our service members and military spouses, they wouldn't mm -hmm. be having turnovers right now in these different come companies. On. Let's talk so about yes, it. I'm going to always push it. for the, the military family, and I'm mm -hmm. always going to push for us having employment. Military spouses, you have a voice. Speak it. Come on. Yes. Yes. That is so wonderful. Look, y'all, we're going to have to have Miss Franchetta on for a part two. I'm as long as you open, sis, I'm open. We're going to have to have you back. Yes. We're going to have to have you back on for a part two because that right there was a mic drop. Because I don't think a lot of people realize how when you've spent 20, 30, 40 years of service, as a family, mm -hmm. and then you come into the civilian world, how that impacts your total self, yes. especially in the area of knowing I have value. Yes. My value did not decrease simply no. because I'm no longer serving my country in this capacity. Correct. I'm no longer serving, you know, but yes. I still am that same valuable person that I was when I was sitting in these command positions. Yes. You know, and even as a military spouse, if I'm transitioning yes. and you've discovered in this transition, you can no longer keep that GS, that nap, yes. that contracting or whatever. And you're you're bought and you go home to your small town America mm -hmm. and you're like, what well, you know, who am I? What value do I have to bring? What can I do? No, we have value. Always. We have always. value. Always. I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. Thank you so much, Miss Franchetta. Y'all, I know this broadcast and looked a little strange because I'm on this camera. And <laughs> normally I'd be putting some things in the chat, but don't worry about it. I'm going to go back and make sure that all of Miss Franchetta's contact information is in the comment section of everywhere that we're broadcasting live to. Thank so you. if okay. you didn't get it, check the chat. If you did not get it, check the chat. Give me, give me about 30 minutes, y'all, to get to everything, to all these places we're streaming. But all of her information will be out there. And I highly recommend re-watching, share, and reach out to Miss Franchetta. I see that Miss Linda says, Miss Franchetta, thank you for encouragement. Laquita, thank you for your platform, and she will share as well. Thank you so thank much, Miss Linda. Yes, we appreciate you. We, we appreciate you. Yes. Look, guys. It has been a blessing. I don't want to overrun my time with Miss Franchetta because I'm trying to get her to agree to come back on for a part two so she can share some more wisdom uh, and re-emphasize this wisdom because I know for me, watching the replay is great, but I like to ask questions to people. So we might reshare some of this information again and mm -hmm. give the people who didn't get a chance to catch it live this time an opportunity to catch you live next time okay. and get, get, you know, get some questions answered. Amen. No <laughs> Amen. But listen, y'all, y'all be blessed and have an amazing, amazing rest of your evening. Take care.